I'm Shirley Gonzalez, City Councilwoman for District 5. Uh, I represent um, the part of town where so much history uh, for Mexican American civil rights uh, started. Right here in San Antonio, we created uh, the Mexican uh, American Legal Defense Fund. Uh, we started with the um, Mexican American Unity Council. Uh, we had Cops Metro come out of San Antonio. And there are others that really kicked off the civil rights movement uh, for the entire country right here in San Antonio. And uh, I was very proud to work with a couple of people uh, that were instrumental in getting this organization started. Uh, and we started with $250,000 from the city to start the inaugural uh, institute, and we look forward to growing it into a national organization uh, that uh, people from all over the country can learn and study about how civil rights really began for Mexican Americans here in San Antonio. Buen día a todos. Good day to all. It's a great and wonderful day. We celebrate the beginning of realizing a dream, creating a place and a space on our civil rights history, the Mexican-American Civil Rights Institute. Our story is not told in the nation's public schools, pre-K to the university. And if it is, the teaching is superficial, not enough, and way off the mark. Let me explain quickly. The political buttons on this poster were our medals of struggle, our merit badges, our battle ribbons, if you will. Each one has a story of our civil rights. We wore these daily in public to show who, what, when, and why we were in the Chicano movement. We demanded respect, justice, equality, opportunity, and freedom from hate against all of us for just being of Mexican origin. Our U.S. of A. was Spanish and Mexican before it was English. Americans, Americanos, or all of us in the North, Central Caribbean, and South Americas. I'm the last of the four horsemen leaders of the Chicano movement. Cesar Chavez from California, Corky Gonzalez from Denver, Colorado, and Reyes Lopez Tirina, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Although he was born not far from San Antonio in Fall City, Texas, his brother Ramon was lived in San Antonio on the South Side. They've all passed away. I was born into a Mexican family in Crystal City, Texas. Uh, and, you know, my father fought with Pancho Villa in the Mexican Revolution. He was the only doctor in Cristal, as we call our town. He was not allowed hospital privileges. My mother was born in San Antonio, but pushed out of school by the eighth grade. She taught herself with correspondence quirks. I was also punished like her for speaking Spanish. But I did something about it. Read about it. Several of us who have felt that discrimination and prejudice formed Mayo, the Mexican-American Youth Organization. We organized over 40 school walkouts in Texas and over 300 nationwide. We organized the Mexican American Unity Council in San Antonio. Later, the Southwest Council also uh, it moved to Phoenix, and which later became the National Council of La Raza, now called Unidos, us. We organized the Southwest Voter Registration and Education Project. We were engaged in nation building, Chicano style, to lead and govern ourselves. We formed a political party, La Raza Unida, we spread the 17 states plus the District of Columbia and elected Frank Schaefer Corona to the school board in Washington, D.C. I've been at this since I was 16, and now I'm an old guy. But my kids and grandkids will carry on. They know our civil rights. The older ones were there. The younger ones heard from it, from me and, my, and their mothers. My grandkids are reading about me. I do write books, lots of them. And I hope to have my granddaughter, Jacqueline, my Afro-Latina Chula Nieta, learn about me and our civil rights history. When she and her daughter, Cameron, my great-granddaughter, will visit the Mexican-American Civil Rights Institute. You and yours should also. Gracias. Okay. Thank you. Um, Frank, over to you. Yes. I grew up in Edna, Texas. Uh, which is probably actual experience of having going to school separate schools for the first three grades. Uh, I know we were not allowed to have haircuts. Uh, uh, we weren't in certain restaurants and we could not eat. Uh, so I grew up at least initially 
uh, but I had a strong mother <laughs> who actually was an undocumented immigrant, but she learned to limited by how to read and write English uh, and speak English. Like I said, limited, uh, but she was able, then she uh, had the energy and uh, foresight to keep, to ensure that we got educated. Because she, she always told us, you've got to get educated, you got to get educated. And early on, my father would take me to the courthouse. And at that time, there was a famous lawyer who passed away now named uh, Gus Garcia. He was the one that uh, first Latino that ever argued before the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and that case originated in Edna. Uh, and the argument was that uh, uh, Mexicanos were not uh, allowed to serve on juries. And so that was the issue that he took up to the Supreme Court. Uh, and I can still remember the quote that he was arguing before, uh, Chief Justice Earl Warren was the chief then. And he says, as long as the mind of man can recollect, never as a Mexicano ever served on the jury. Uh, and I remember the uh, Justice Warren said, Counselor, you may, you know, you're allowed, I think, 10, 15 minutes. And he says, continue. He spoke for 30 minutes, which is historic. Uh, he was a great orator. He has a brilliant mind. But unfortunately, he died uh, sadly. Uh, alcohol got the best of him. But he was one of our great leaders in terms of a legal perspective. Uh, and so, to some extent, I attribute my desire to become a lawyer because of him. I think uh, what Frank and I also uh, are so proud to be in San Antonio, where so many organizations first started to recognize the inequality from LULAC to Southwest Voter Registration to MALDEF. You know, San Antonio was the beginning of KCOR and some of the Spanish language stations. And, and so I think for me, uh, the greatest uh, honor is to be a part of Makri and uh, bring this history together in one place for the whole United States. You know, a, a, a history that will be accessible because there are stories like the one Frank told uh, about Edna and about Gus Garcia all across the United States. And, uh, and so I feel very privileged to be a part of the advisory council and to know that we will be gathering these wonderful stories, but more importantly, uh, a history that should never be repeated, a history that we need to be aware of, educate our children, and make sure that the future is uh, equal for everyone, because that's the basis of our country, the United States. It's uh, a land of equality and, and um, very great opportunity. I was born on Houston Street on the deep west side of San Antonio. And because of my father and mother, I was able to join the United States Department of State as a foreign service officer because I was raised that there's no such word as can't. There's no um, obstacle that with God's help, you can't get through and get over. And, and if things don't work out for you, and I learned this from Frank, uh, there's no such thing as failure. They're just opportunities to send you in a different direction. And, uh, and so I'm very blessed to be married to Frank and very blessed to be a part of Montgomery. We launched, we knew that it was the place to give it a home. As an archive, it will allow us to be able to save that footage and make it available to anyone who wants to see the history that Cesar Chavez brought and how he lived his words. So we're very excited and we hope that you all also are able to help Macri build that archive. Congratulations, Macri. Felicidades from all of us here in San Antonio. We are so proud. Y de nuestra familia Macri, les queremos dar las gracias por ser una de las luces más grandes que vamos a estar o que vamos a establecer aquí en San Antonio para la historia de los latinos. Thank you and congratulations, Macri.